Chrome versus Firefox, the most popular browser versus an open source one. I mean, I should give Firefox a win just because of the Google logo kind of sucks. But to see which one of them is truly better, let's stick only to the facts. And boy, do I have some facts for you. Okay, comparing Google Chrome versus Firefox UI is probably the least objective thing. Yet at the base, both browsers follow a very similar layout. Chrome's default UI is simple and clean and something we're all used to. I can apply a variety of themes, make it funky, or blend it with my system's color scheme. It's pretty cool. But it's not like Chrome stands out in this area. The current Firefox browser is sleek as well, and you can apply themes to it just like with Chrome. What I like more though, is that I can rearrange most of the elements within the browser to fit my liking, like the toolbar for example. In terms of Chrome versus Firefox, Android and iOS comparison, to me Chrome feels a bit more intuitive. But if you want a minimalistic and distraction free browser on your phone, there's a pretty cool separate browser called Firefox Focus. Anyway, more obvious differences between Chrome versus Firefox emerge if you look deeper at what each browser can do. Naturally, Chrome has an advantage when it comes to integration with other Google tools. I mean, you can use them on Firefox too, but it's just more seamless with Google. Then you've got a big pool of Google Chrome extensions, only a handful of which are truly safe to use, but alas, it's not like Firefox extensions are all completely secure. Either way, you need to check and verify what you're adding to your browser. Chrome also has some pretty cool additional tools like the Memory Saver that will free up memory from inactive tabs and limit Chrome from draining so much of my RAM. I also have the Energy Saver turned on to limit background activities and visuals when my battery's under 20%. These have been around for a couple of years, but there's some new stuff too, namely Chrome jumping on the AI train and introducing AI-powered features for organization, theme creation, and writing. Rather than chasing trends, Firefox, at least for now, seems to focus on tools that can make your life easier, or at least give you a more seamless browsing experience. There's stuff like a built-in screenshot tool, a pretty convenient reader mode, and more importantly, enhanced privacy controls. There's a private browser feature that, unlike Chrome's incognito lawsuit fiasco, is very honest about what it does and doesn't do. Also, did you know the Firefox browser can automatically block autoplay videos on sites? It's wonderful. Those things are everywhere now. Then you've got the free Mozilla password manager and the Firefox monitor that can notify you about old or breached passwords. And yes, Google Chrome password manager is also a thing, but while it's convenient, it's absolutely bare bones and doesn't even have a zero knowledge architecture. That means that Google can see your logins. Not cool. But it's not like Chrome could be considered a private browser anyway. That's actually the main reason why Firefox is better than Chrome. I'm not saying that Chrome isn't secure. From the browser security standpoint, it's solid, with frequent updates to patch up vulnerabilities. Firefox can boast the same level of browser security, especially since it's open source and it's also frequently updated. But from a privacy standpoint, these two couldn't be more different. That's because Google is a data leech. It collects and sells data to third parties and then earns even more money with targeted ads. Sure, you could avoid such things by learning more about cybersecurity by subscribing to my channel and using a VPN or at least an ad blocker. But with the Manifest V3 API coming out, Chrome will be able to limit the effectiveness of ad blockers and other filtering tools. That in turn opens more doors to even more tracking. So what about Mozilla's Firefox? Is it better in this case? For starters, it's a non-profit organization, and since they're not greedy for money, they're not greedy for your data either. But it goes much deeper than that. Firefox has something called Enhanced Tracking Protection, which blocks various trackers and cookies, and this way prevents data collection by default. So yeah, in a Google Chrome versus Firefox privacy battle, Firefox definitely wins. However, Chrome is considered to be slightly faster. It can preload the pages you visit the most in the background, prioritize active tabs, and offload some tasks to your PC's hardware. But then, if you check your PC's task manager while using Chrome, one question arises. Why does Chrome use so much RAM? Nothing comes free, my friend. And the price for great Chrome speeds, in this case, is your RAM. After a Chrome versus Firefox RAM usage test, I noticed that Firefox generally uses a little less, but that's why it's a touch slower too. In general though, that's the case if you compare Firefox versus Chromium-based browsers like Edge or Brave. Firefox uses its own browser engine called Quantum, which is 
basically their previous attempt, Gecko, but with a few improvements and a fancier name. I will say though, Firefox performance is much better than it used to be. Those improvements really did something. On top of that, Firefox has tools to optimize performance, such as hardware acceleration. At this point, you probably already realize that in a Chrome versus Firefox comparison, I heavily lean towards the latter. That's my preference, but the facts don't lie. Firefox is a much more privacy conscious choice and it's better for seamless browsing, especially since it doesn't limit ad blockers and can get rid of autoplay videos all by itself. Chrome isn't evil and it's not bad either. It's just much less private and more resource demanding. Let me know in the comments which browser you're using and if you like this video, please drop a like and subscribe to my channel. Thanks, see you soon.